Let's prepare for our first day of school. In this podcast, I will cover talking to my art students about rules and expectations, a game called Guess the Medium, the weekly spotlight artist, the basic art elements covered through the school year, sketchbooks for each student. At the beginning of school, I spend the first week of art classes talking to my students about the rules, guidelines, and what I expect of them. I hand out a sheet of paper with all of the information I discuss on it. I used to have them take it home and have their parents sign it with them and have them return it to me, but I don't feel the need to do that anymore. It's enough to explain the rules and refer back to them when I need to. And if a student is acting disrespectful or breaking a rule, I'll give them a warning. I really hate sending notes home to parents, but it's better to do it sooner rather than later to stop the bad behavior. It shows the student I mean what I say. I've created a conduct form that I really like. There's a link to it in the show notes so you can print it out and use it. My hope is that it makes the student really consider their behavior and change it. On the form, there are four questions for them to answer. What did I choose to do, which I usually fill out with them? (laughs) Why did I make this choice? Who did I bother or disrespect? And two things I could have done instead. The student brings the form back with their signature along with their parent's signature. And I've learned the hard way that if there are further issues or if the form is not returned, I go ahead and call the parent. Email is not the way to handle conduct issues with students. If I take the time to explain to the parent that I really want their child to be a part of art and have fun in class, as well as being respectful towards me and the other students, that is usually enough. When I make the mistake of letting unwanted behavior go unchecked, I always regret it. For the younger students in pre-K through second grade, I hang up large pictures of a giraffe looking straight into the camera, an orangutan with his hand raised up in the air, and a tiny white puppy covered in spilled paint. You can use any pictures you want to convey the same messages. The first picture with the giraffe says, listen with your face. I love this phrase. I want all eyes on me so I know I have everyone's attention. When someone is talking while I'm giving instructions, I ask them to listen with your face with the hopes that that cute giraffe picture pops into their head. The second picture says, wait to ask your questions. And it never fails. When I'm in the middle of explaining an art project, I'll call on a raised hand only to be derailed by them announcing that their cat died, or they have a loose tooth, or their grandma is picking them up from school today. They are adorable, but I try to spend as little time giving instruction the first five minutes of class so we can spend the rest of the class creating and chatting. I ask my students to please hold on tight to your questions until I'm through talking. The third picture is a cute little white puppy sitting in spilt paint, brightly covered paint, all over its white fur. This is when I explain to the class how serious I am about respect for the art supplies, for our classroom, getting paint on other people, on themselves, and especially marking on someone else's artwork. I also need respect for cleanup time, which is the hardest ask of all. It's difficult for kids to stop having fun and start cleaning up, and I try to give them as much time for art as possible, with about five minutes for cleaning up. This is something I still struggle with. If the kids are not stopping what they're doing, I have a noisemaker I use to get their attention. I try several positive ways to get them going. I will praise the kids at the first table to clean up and tell them they can line up at the door first, which is hugely important to them. Um, I'll boast to their teachers uh, about how fast the first table was at cleaning up. I hate to have to tell the kids that I'm going to have to talk to their teacher, but usually that works. Guess the medium. Each week when the kids walk into class, they look at the picture I've posted of artwork made of something very strange and unexpected. They can raise their hand if they would like to guess. Initially, the game teaches the kids the meaning of art medium. If a student wants to guess, they raise their hand with one finger up if they are first, and two fingers if they are second, and so on. 
If the students are noisy, I'll call on the kids who enter the classroom quietly. I find the most bizarre artwork online. Portraits drawn with human hair, a kaleidoscope of bugs and beetles, a pointillism portrait of Tiger Woods made with golf tees, Kevin Bacon made of bacon, uh, a sculpture of an astronaut made of wire clothes hangers, and a mosaic of a toaster made from bread toasted at different levels. They are so much fun. Spotlight artist. I have a bulletin board in the room with pictures of an artist and their work or pictures showing an example of an art movement. I try to focus on American artists and living artists. I also try to find artists or art movements that have an inspiring story or just are interesting. I always start by asking if anyone knows the artist. That can get pretty funny. For example, it seems many kids know about Vincent van Gogh because he is the guy who cut his ear off. <laughs> but you never know if someone has traveled to New Orleans and seen Blue Dog by George Roderick, or maybe they've gone to New York or Park City, Utah and seen a Banksy on their travels. Basic Elements of Art Throughout the year, I try to base most of the projects on the basic elements of art. Students can learn how to create interesting art and also learn how to appreciate art and understand why they might be drawn to a specific piece. We start out with the simplest form of art, line drawings. Space includes positive and negative space, optical illusions, and then we get into printmaking. In perspective, we draw objects that look 3D as well as study worm's eye view and bird's eye view. In value, we learn how to shade and understand the importance of your light source. Color gets into color theory, which is a lot of fun. Learning how colors make you hungry and energized, learning how certain colors make you tired or calm. This is when we also learn about the color wheel and mixing paint colors. I get into composition a little bit with the older kids and texture is the category that encompasses ceramics, paper mache, jewelry, weaving, and anything three-dimensional or tactile. Finally, I give each student their own sketchbook. I like to tell the students that art is a lot like learning to play a musical instrument or playing a sport, in that every time you practice, you get better and better. At the end of the year, they can look at what they drew in the first few pages and see how their art has improved. They take the sketchbook home on the last day of school the sketchbook is great for two reasons. The first is that students who finish their projects early have something to keep them occupied. In my classroom, I also have coloring sheets and how to draw sheets and blank paper available. The second reason is it helps me remember their names. For the remainder of the first day of art class, all the students are decorating their sketchbook covers. I show them where all the art supplies are located in the room and I also supply the younger kids with stickers, which they absolutely love. They can decorate their sketchbook covers any way they want, but it has to have their name on it. This gives me a chance to learn their names, which can be so difficult. I really try hard because every kid wants to be called by their name, and I want to get to know them too. It takes me a few months to get them all down, and the sketchbook really, really helps. I spend about two to three dollars for each sketchbook and it is worth every penny. I like to find spiral bound so the papers lay flat when you're using it and I keep the books about five and a half by eight and a half inches, not too small. Each year they get more and more expensive and I really struggle to find affordable ones. Last year I found some at the dollar store and I bought them out. I make my own sketchbooks for the younger students in pre-k through second grade. What I do is I take a couple reams of letter-sized paper to Copy Doctor. It's a copy business nearby. They cut the reams of paper in half to five and a half by eight and a half. And they use this machine they have to punch really small holes all along the long side of the paper. I also have them cut and punch some heavier colored paper like Astro Brights so the kids can use those as the covers. You could probably staple sheets together to make a book, uh, but I found a huge amount of these plastic spirals online. They're used in comb binding machines to make spiral bound reports and notebooks. So I take the punched paper home and twist 
these plastic spirals through the holes of a stack of about 30 sheets. I make them while I'm watching TV and it goes by quickly. They make nice little notebooks and I save a ton of money that way. Last of all, I like to let each student know that art is subjective, which means it's personal. You may really love a work of art while your friend may dislike that same piece. It's important to me that the kids express themselves through their work, but I will never judge their work, and thankfully, I don't have to grade it. At our school, their conduct is their grade, which is awesome. I tell them that if any student asks me if their work is good or if it's right, which happens all the time, I'll just ask them what they want to achieve and then give them direction or suggestions, which they can take or they don't have to take. Listen, after a day of math, English, and history, learning the correct answer to a problem or the date something occurred, I want them to come into art and experiment and play and just to know that there's no one right answer. I want them to explore all the possibilities their imagination can come up with. I hope this podcast is helpful to you. My hope is that it inspires and equips you to be the best guide you can be to budding young artists while having fun doing it. You can find Art Class Time across all platforms. And one last very important and adorable message. Please help Mrs. Harrison out. Please like and subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.